number one, we continue to see conservatives uniting behind our campaign. But number two, Jake, it is now apparent that the only campaign that can beat Donald Trump and that has beaten Donald Trump is our campaign. Ted Cruz confident that he is the only one who can beat Donald Trump, but that claim is also coming from Marco Rubio. The junior senator from Florida is hoping for another second place finish in Nevada, once again beating out Ted Cruz. So how will the caucus in Nevada play out tonight? Let's bring in our panel. Uh, joining us from Newsmax Washington, a supporter of Marco Rubio's, former United States Senator and Governor from Virginia, George Allen. And also Skyping in from Virginia, Cruz supporter and the chairman of conservativehq.com, Richard Vigory. And from Nashville, Tennessee, Trump supporter and chief political correspondent for USA Radio Networks, Scotty Nell Hughes. George Allen, good to have you here tonight on Newsmax Prime. Just got to ask you this. If Rubio finishes third tonight, is he still going to try to sell that as a win? Well, Marco Rubio will do well, and everyone will get some delegate votes probably out of Nevada. Trump looks to be strongest there. March 5th is, uh, March 1st, I should say, Super Tuesday, is really going to be important. And uh, there will be a lot of races, some proportional. Uh, Texas is a, a must win for Cruz to some extent since Kasich is making such an effort. Michigan is a must win on March 1st. And then uh, March 15th and Florida will be a must win crucial race uh, for Marco Rubio. But we've, we've seen in the Rubio campaign since uh, the momentum out, out of South Carolina, a lot of uh, good grassroots support joining with him, new endorsements. And so I think Marco has some really good momentum uh, for his campaign. And Nevada will be important, but uh, March 1st, Super Tuesday is really going to be an important delegate vote day, but particularly some of those crucial states like Texas for Ted Cruz and Michigan for, for Kasich. Fair enough. George, taking us through the calendar, Richard Vigory, here's what's being said about Ted Cruz. Sure, Texas is important, but tonight he needs at least a second place finish, does he not? I don't think so. I think he probably will come in uh, no worse th than second. But, uh, you know, as long as you're in the top three and competitive for the next month or so, you're going to stay in the race and, and be competitive. Uh, you made you and George have made references to uh, Cruz carrying Texas. I don't know of anybody that's uh, questioning that. But there is a lot of question about whether Rubio can carry his state of Florida and that Trump might uh, clean his clock there. So any, it's also, by the way, you know, South Carolina was virtually a tie between Rubio and Cruz, but also you saw that it was an open primary. Democrats, independents could come into South Carolina. That won't be the case in Nevada and most of the states uh, after today. Scotty, now let's turn to you. Opponents are making the case against Trump. I'm hearing some pundits in Washington at a certain uh, cable network saying that Trump is unelectable. Uh, what's your response to that? Well, I'd like to agree with both of these men. I think they represent great candidates that have just talked and as well as some of those pundits. But one problem, these states that they're talking about, Mr. Trump is leading in 10 out of the 14 states that are on March 1st, as well as he's been leading since day one. They really have not changed. So you can sit there and you can talk about second and third and we need to be in the top three. To Mr. Trump, he's been at number one. He's been number one in the last two uh, state primaries. He'll be number one tonight. And the problem is when you have people in the Rubio camp as well as Casey, the camp crews not so much right now talking about that we're going to have to go to some form of a brokered convention in order for them to win it really scares me about this idea of unifying our party eventually because last time i checked the real enemy is the democrats and we're doing a really good job of destroying ourselves right now by not unifying by the overwhelmingly majority number one in almost every single poll in every single state. And yet it is the height of primary season and a lot of delegates have yet to be selected uh, beginning tonight in Nevada with the caucus. Uh, Bob Vanderplatz, so the family leader, that uh, social conservative group in Iowa, endorsed Ted Cruz in the Hawkeye State. He says a narrowing field will benefit Cruz. Let's look and listen. But I think what Donald Trump is, he's benefiting right now from a divided field. And the field is starting to narrow now. And anytime that field narrows, all of our internals, all of our polling shows that Ted Cruz does much better when this field narrows. Uh, Richard, I would suspect you're in the amen corner right there with Bob Vanderplatz. Absolutely. I was on the phone a few minutes ago with Bob, as a matter of fact. So uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think the most underrated uh, 
important thing in uh, presidential politics, uh, J.D., is the importance of a base. Uh, and uh, Trump has had a base uh, since he got in the race, and that's his pocketbook, $10 billion. Give me $10 billion, I'll run for president. I suspect George would, too. Uh, but uh, Rubio has not had a base until uh, just recently when the Republican establishment is now rushing to him. Today's uh, Washington Times headline I've got here says, Establishment Rushing to Rubio. As that message gets out to the grassroots, that's not going to resonate very well if the establishment is, uh, is moving towards Rubio. And that's his base while the grassroots is supporting uh, Cruz. I think we're coming down to three lanes, a Trump lane, an establishment lane, and a conservative lane. And that bodes very well for Cruz. Well, let, let me just ask George Allen this. Uh, to be fair about it, Cruz's situation, firing his campaign spokesman yesterday, is Ted Cruz in some difficult times? 30 seconds, uh, George. Well, uh, Ted Cruz uh, is going to have a hard time, and, and Richard just was saying it, is having a hard time getting people to join his uh, and support his campaign. Marco Rubio, by all polls on a head-to-head -head and take the CNU poll in Virginia last week, has the best favorable unfavorables and has the best chance of uniting Republicans and getting young people and new people to join our cause. And it's a conservative cause, and I think people like positive, constructive ideas on tax reform and productive energy policy and reining in the unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats up in Washington and, and trusting the people in the states to make decisions for themselves. And so I think that uh, Marco Rubio, as some of as the field winnows, as, as Jeb Bush went out and as Kasich probably will go out, Marco Rubio is going to be, I think, in a very strong position. And, and he'll go we, we are out of time. Thanks to all three of you. This reminder tonight, our coverage of the Nevada primary follows Newsmax Prime.